welcome everybody to Panfish Nation. Long Mark, I'm wild. You dancing or what? I'm, I'm doing. I'm doing the groove to that countdown. I hate that damn thing, but you gotta go, man. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> you know, when you got a song in your heart, you're a happy man. And I, I try to you. have it in my heart all the time. So, man, we had a beautiful day in Lowe's Arts today. Yeah, I don't even start. It was <laughs> uh, 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 a high of 28 today over here with 20 mile an hour winds. We finally. I don't know if you guys could see past this light but we still got some sunlight out it finally got sunny here about an hour ago so i hate to tell you it's still 51 here uh, what is it here let's see what it is here <laughs> uh you just want here i actually got up to 38 today but it is still what 16 mile an hour winds yeah we had no wind yeah and, and and like we were talking before the show i got taking my truck in to get some some work done to it it needs a heater core so it, it'll be in a shop for a few days so Figure I timed it right with the weather. We're supposed to get into the 50s later on uh, at the end of next week. So hopefully that'll all get done. And I mean, the truck's got, you know, we're going to do, I'm going to do a lot of towing this year. So I got to make sure she's in good shape. And I'm starting to smell a little bit of antifreeze when I got that heater on, which is never a good sign. So that is a telltale sign that you're going to have a heater core pulling out antifreeze in your floorboard mm -hmm. very soon. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd do it myself, but. I, in order to do it on that truck, now I could be wrong. I think you got to take the airbag and the steering wheel off to get that dashboard off. And I, I don't like messing with the airbag. It's kind of well, right there. But yeah, it, it can be. And I haven't done any of the, the really new ones, but I've done a lot of the older ones. And you just, as long as you disconnect them, you don't have any problem. But the new ones may have changed. I don't know. Yeah. I have no, all I know is when I used to, when I was a, a kid back in high school, I used to work at a dealership right when airbags came out, and them suckers used to scare the crap out of me and everybody else in there with them airbags. Hook them up to those jumper boxes and flip them switches, man. They'd they'd scare the daylights out of you. Have you ever been hit by one? I thank God I have not. I hit a deer one time, a little Ford Ranger I had, and um, the airbag exploded on me, and it's like. I, it's hard to explain, but it's like being hit in the face with a um, nothing hard, but real fast. You know, like somebody punching you with a as hard as they can, but not with with a soft boxing glove on. It, it, it hurts, but and when you ain't expecting it either, when you hit a deer, you ain't expecting it. So no, that's exactly right. Well, this just jumped up. It already been hit, and it was in the median, and I was just going down the road, and it just jumped up right in front of me. I nah. told my poor little old dachshund in the floor. I opened the door to get out to make sure I was still breathing, and he bailed out. He was scared to death running around there, and it was rush hour, and it, it was just a cluster, you know. Greg Burgess says it's 69 degrees where he's at. I don't know where Greg lives at, but it must be south of me. Look at this. <laughs> I was hit with an ugly stick. It hurt bad. Oh, Come on, take it easy on yourself, but. <laughs> let's see we, we got like some people starting to come in here what do you say i say a lot of the people are here and we'll we'll, holler, do it, we'll holler out the rest of them when they come in here i, I did say a lot of chat already what's going on bud benoit fishing outdoors how you doing there's donald knight over at three nights fishing our buddy creel over at creel catfishing i think they had the ladies on last night i watched for a little bit um uh, fishing with Jeff Beal. How you doing, Jeff? Uh, Greg Burgess. He already rubbed rubbed it in brother wise. Thanks, Greg. I'm glad at least one of us is having good weather. Hook down crappies here. What's going on? There's a channel supporter, Joe Buck 66. How you doing, Joe? Hook down crappies here. Also, what's going on, bud? Uh, I see Parker Pursuits. How you doing, Jerry? There's my buddy Ryan over at Set Hooks and Crossing Eyes. Uh, we had a little discussion this week via text. We learned a lot of stuff. Uh, Schmieder of the Cedars. There's a name that's popping up more and more. What's going on? But I used to think that was Josh back when Josh was causing trouble. So, <laughs> But it's not. I apologize for that. Miss Chrissy Brown. How you doing, Chrissy? I hope you and Ernie are doing great. There's Matt over at Want to Be Outdoors. Brian B. Catfishing. Let's see what Brian says today. Brian with his typical new... Uh, uh, welcome. I'm not going to read that. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. Stuff, so. uh, let's see if I missed anybody. Bugman, what's up, Buggy? How you doing, sir? Buggy got Buggy got his PB flathead. 
Blue Cat, and he got a trifecta this weekend fishing with J Dog. So he was real excited about that. So heck yeah. That's awesome. Wait, what 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 is Chad talking about? No. He just he just being Chad. Yeah, it would be nice to him. Hey, there's Josh over at the Weekend Angler. How you doing, Josh? Well, I'm glad to see I... Josh in here. Wealth of knowledge. Always got good videos coming up, and I know for sure that he's got an exciting series coming up. So if you get a chance to check out the Weekend Angler, you're going to like that really, really soon. I saw he had a video come out last weekend about a, a bait tank. I haven't had an opportunity to watch it, but I'll make sure to check that out. So Absolutely. is that what you're talking about? No, he has a series coming up where he's going to do some stuff to a boat. It's going to be really cool. Oh, yeah, that's right. He got another boat. Hey, there's Stan over at Susquehanna. Stan, how you doing? <laughs> it would not be thumbnail of the year, Chad. What a hose head. Uh, why do I feel like I'm, I'm involved in this unknowingly? <laughs> it's never good when it's like that. Trust it me, never. it's not. <laughs> oh, man. Man, oh, man. So you're not going to be, you haven't been out on the water, and you're not going to be out on the water. Not until I get my truck back. I might I might go try some bank fishing or something, but I need to get this stuff rolling. I got some other stuff going on here at home, so I haven't been able to be online all too much, so we haven't spoken much at all. But, you know, that, that, that will happen. So, I mean, it is what it is. I'd like to be out. I have plans to get out on the river, and we talked about this, what, like a week, maybe two weeks ago. I wanted to get my boat out on the river uh, with my electronics and not fish. Mm -hmm. Just uh, go up and down and see how, because it's a river, how things have changed from last year to this year. Mark, drop a bunch of waypoints on any new structure. Make sure that existing structure is still there and kind of just get a base of uh, where I want to fish this year, uh, going after them flatheads and, and channel cats in general. Um so we'll see. We might, uh, if I can get out there next week, that's probably the first thing I'll do. Make a whole day out of it. If I get 50 degrees, I'd be a happy man. I can do half of that 18 mile stretch of river that I fish and relatively quickly and maybe get some lines out there. Ma um, Mama P wants some channel cats. So I promised her I'd bring her some. She's probably going to be waiting for him at Easter. Oh, and we have to wish everybody a happy Easter, definitely. Lyle. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's coming up this weekend. Oh, by yeah. the way, uh, <laughs> 76 or Friday here. We're going to have three or four days of 70, almost 80 degree weather. Why do you, why do you all hate me weather-wise? It's, it's not it hate. It has nothing. I just want to share it with you. <laughs> Sharing is caring, right, Which Lyle? reminds me, before I forget it, uh, sometime tonight, send me your shipping address. I got something I want to send to you. If I don't you tell just, you, that, you could just send me an emoji. You don't have to send me like an actual hand drawn picture of it. Of it? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody cut that out for me. <laughs> what? what? What are we doing? I have no idea. I do have something for you. I really do. All right, and, I'll, send, uh, I'll send you the address, but you know. Yeah, because I, you know, I may have it in my mail deal, but uh, if you send it to me, I know I got it. And I got some stuff I want you to try out because uh, by the time it gets there, you probably have your truck back where the mail's been running. I had another package that I'd shipped uh, someday last week, and uh, people still haven't got it, but it's the mail. What are you going to do? Yeah, it is what it is. I, I you know, I got a, uh, that, that real I won. Uh, from Donald Knight, I got that relatively quickly. So, but but what was weird is uh, um, he had shipped it to my PO box and it said it still wasn't delivered. I went there because I had to go pick up some uh, uh, stuff for work, and uh, um, it was there. So I, I don't know what's going on with the post office. So uh, we never do, do we? No, never do. And and you may go for months and months and months and not have any issues anywhere. Ship them all over, and then all of a sudden you may have one that'll just come up missing, or maybe it's more than one. Then it may not happen again for a while, but you just never know. And um, it makes it tough because not only are you at the cost of shipping, you're out whatever the cost of the particle was or articles. And um, people are expecting them. And, and even if you send them the tracking number, it doesn't mean they're ever going to get it. Just don't. So. 
Chip That's Vincent kind of just saw my dog in the background. I didn't re- you know, she's been in here, but I didn't realize she was in here. It's automatic. But anyways, I apologize for that if she's disruptive. She's not. She's not at all. But that's okay. Tonight, Mark, we're going to talk a little bit about fishing, finding fish. Yep. I, you know, when when you brought the topic up to my attention, I kind of figured that we could talk about it in a couple of ways. Finding spots to fish and actually finding fish in those spots. Um, you know, and and I know, you know, our buddy James Dockery, he travels a lot. He fishes all sorts of places. He probably would have been a good job, a good person to have on the job tonight. It, um, it, that's probably true. Yeah, no, somebody who uh, uh, travels to as many different places as he does and, and as successful as he does would have had some good insight. Maybe we'll have him on in a future show and, and we can yeah. talk about stuff like that. So Absolutely. He, you yeah. know, and it's not like he's out there in a boat, too. He's he's bank fishing or fishing off a of docks or something, and, and that just makes it even harder to find fish on new water. I mean, he'll drive two hours and get on the fish. It'd be nice to pick his brain how he actually uh, um, picks those spots to fish, you know. To be quite honest, I think it's a challenge to him to go to a new place and get on fish. Mm-hmm. I, I really do, because he already knows pretty much with seasonal changes and weather changes and different things, uh, the places that he normally fishes, he knows how to, how to make the adjustments and catch fish there because he's been doing it for so long. So if he, if he goes two hours or three hours or someplace like that, to a new lake, and he jumps on that thing, and it's a challenge. And I'll tell you how I know that. Uh, him and Katie were down pictures here. To rub it in like you do with weather forecasts to rub it into me? <laughs> Maybe. We was, they come down over the weekend. They had a big uh, archery tournament that the MDC puts on for kids down in Branson, and they was down there helping with that. Mm-hmm. And um, – him and Katie worked at well, they stopped on the way down here and we decided we would go fishing. And I took them two different places. And while I was getting my stuff ready and Katie was getting her stuff ready, James is gone. He didn't skied out. <laughs> he didn't want to fish. He was going to fish. <laughs> he was gone. He's hoofing it up and down the, the river banks and the creek banks. And he's off all by himself in a whole new world and left us. Just didn't even say nothing. He's gone. And and that's why I say it's a challenge to him to find his spot that he wants to fish. And where I typically fish, it isn't suiting, <laughs> which is okay because, you know, uh, I could see where he was at. And, and I had been to some of the places that he, that he was, went to fish, but it just, you know, it was one of them days and nothing was going on, working right and, and, uh, we had some weather fronts move through and different things, but it was really awesome to have him and Katie down here. And he didn't, he made it perfectly clear to me when he showed up, he didn't want to take nothing extra on with him. That didn't work out real well for him. <laughs> <laughs> he, he took some stuff home with him. <laughs> Good deal. You know, yeah, and you had mentioned that he's off hoofing it down the bank or whatever, looking for spots. And, and that kind of reminded me that I'm a firm believer in, in, and the harder the spot is to get to to fish, the more apt you are to do well in those spots. Now, that's and not true in every case. No. But if, if you, you know, let's say I go down here to the dam where everybody's bank fishing, mm-hmm. and it's a small dam, it's a small river, right? You got 30 people out there fishing on a Friday night. The spot is so pressured that, you know, two or three people out of those 30 get on some fish, and it is that's a right. Night. You know, you, you make the hike down river a little bit. You get permission from someone to fish in their backyard. You, you march down the side of one of these little creeks or something that's full of, uh, um, uh, let's say, suckers during their spawn or whatever. Um, we learn a lot about, you know, flatheads that way, about where they're going to be feeding at and stuff. You're, you're, you're going to do better. I agree. And, and um, I'm a firm believer in the harder place is to get to the less – pressure it's going to have i see dave from double hook angling has joined us dave i hope you're feeling better uh know you had some issues there and i hope that's uh i know that you're home doing well and i think i seen where he was out fishing the other day not really I saw sure. him. he was tying jigs today i was in his show he was and kind of preoccupied I, I didn't see him uh, um 
Uh, I don't think he noticed me in there, but I was in there in between a couple of uh, phone, work phone calls and stuff. So uh, Mike Irvin did join us too, Mike. What's going on? And John Boy's Catfishing came in here too. Welcome, gentlemen. How you doing? I think Mike was the first one in chat tonight. Well, well there you go. I think he was. <laughs> but it's great to have all the folks in. And like I said, we hope Dave's doing real well. Um, but, yeah, one of the things that, that I wanted to touch on tonight and – Bluegill, crappie, perch, sunfish of any kind, I don't care what it is, is like any other kind of fish. They have a particular type of structure that they want to be on. And they're going to be oriented for the most part around some kind of structure or something to eat. If you can find that structure or what they're feeding on, there's a really good chance you'll catch a lot of fish. Now. Agreed. My favorite kind of structure for panfish is brush piles and trees that's been in the water. Wood products of any kind. Anything that's been in there for a long time, they can relate to. Um, sandbars is a great place weeds along the edges of of, of the bank. Uh, they can sneak up in them weeds and hide from the predators that are searching for them and attack the ones that they're predators too. So all kinds of structure like that works out for, re, for me, but brush piles and down trees and root balls, anything like that that I can see or find in the water. Another good place is rock banks. Uh, they hold a lot of crawfish, and all fish eat crawfish. I don't, other than than filter feeders, you know, uh, spoonbill, Asian carp, stuff like that. Uh, all all other fish pretty much will eat a crawfish, and they're in rocks. So if if you got a rock bank, and the bigger the rock, the better. I like it. Don't get hung up as much, but. That's what you're going to find them there. You just are. And if it's got, if it's got a, if it's shallow, if you've got a rock bank that's shallow and has some kind of trees or wood piles in it and deep water where they can get away from stuff, maybe some weeds, you better stay right there because you're going to wear yourself out. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Buck 66, thanks for being a member for 16 months. We appreciate you. And, and also look at this crappie day fish on joined us. He's been a member for 14 months. Thank you very much. Thank he you. released to the grease. That's right. Well, you had mentioned trees and stuff. And from my experience, not only the ones in the water, the ones above the water, too. Yep. Um, and, and here's an example of uh, shark smith angling. Hey, what's going on? But here's an example of that. When when Betty and Brandon were here. Uh, last summer it was it was 100 degrees you you know chad was out by you that so oh, it was miserable that week it, yeah. it was hot sun was blaring you know we kind of didn't fish during the day we saved a lot of our fishing for at night except for the couple of pond hopping jobs i took them out to uh channel lake up here and uh we fished over by the boat launch and um no fish no fish no fish and then i walked over i saw that there's one lonely little tree there the tree's no higher than like 10 feet tall lyle and it's right at the beginning the opening of the channel i walked over there threw my little berkeley gulp mail right under there and boom it was loaded it was thick with not real big panfish but there was a lot of them in there and as soon as you got outside of that shade of that tree that was on the side of that bank there was nothing so keep that in mind. The same reason why they like docks. Docks is another great spot. to. to it is. In. They love shade. The cover is shade. You know, they feel more comfortable in the dark. They feel they can hide more in the dark, which is why they're in weeds and, and things like that. For, for me, I fish a lot of weed lines in ponds and stuff here just because, you know, they're man-made structures. People aren't really throwing... Um, uh, tree branches and stuff in there to get any uh, structure in there unless a big storm comes through and blows it in but that seldom happens so weed lines are are, are your bet um, when, when you're talking structure too what a lot of people don't understand is you know drop offs that structure yes Point, that structure correct uh, change change from you know you had mentioned a, a sandy bottom to a rocky bottom sandy bottom to a mud bottom gravel the mud that mm -hmm. switch is structure Keep an eye out for that stuff. If I'm fishing the river, um, 
I'm looking, you know, points, current seams, uh, people's docks on the river. There's, there's a little more, uh, um, um, structure that's fallen into the water. Not much being such a populated area. Um, some of the few places I catch bluegills are, you know, right outside of those mouse, the creeks where, where, um, there's three of them here that I can think of right offhand that have trees at the mouth of them. And that Creek kind of comes through there. So the bait fish is able to sneak in through there and the bluegills sit out there waiting for, to, to ambush them along with, you know, bass and large mouth and small mouth we have here on the river. Those are good spots. Um, slack water where slack water meets the current seems, you know, that's always a good place, not just for panfish, but for, for, for all species of fish. That's Anything exactly. that's in that river there, that's a high percentage place too. Oh, and here's another one. Ryan mentioned that tires fall in. I have so many tires that are marked on my waypoints that it's ridiculous. I got a pile that appears to be like 20 tires in one spot. I don't know how they got there. I, I, I dragged baits and hooked it. You know how strong that Burke, that uh, suffix 832 is, Lyle? I caught a tire, reeled it all the way up into my boat. I'm like, what do I do with this darn thing now? You put I it back. on all day in my little boat with a tire hanging on the in the bow of the boat. Like, but yeah, That's there's big. a lot of tires out there. As long as they're not too overfilled with sand, they'll lay in there. Um, they catfish will actually spawn inside of them tires. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any other kind of fish do or not, but I know that catfish will. So any kind of fish. Well, in them tires too, you got a lot of, you know, bugs, you know, dig down in there and live because it's technically a current seam underwater. Um, yeah. if it's not full. Um, crawfish like to hide inside of them. As long as they're not full, you know, they're it, it's it's like an, a man-made reef. That's about as good as that's it right. Is. That's exactly right. They're, you know, any anything that's on the bottom of that water or in the water column that changes any part of it is structure. And something is going to be on that. It, it just is. So those are kind of the spots that I, I look at. Ponds, like I said, I go a little different. Um, you know, I've done a couple of lives fishing for bait uh, at this creek that opens up into a community. Not Well... A, a, a city drainage, right, that I do pretty well at over there at, at certain times of the years. So creek openings, um, things like that. I don't like to go back there too much. I've gotten a lot of, welcome in, Danny Stone. <laughs> <laughs> and Guerrero Padres joined us too. What's up, Guerrero? Glad to see everybody making it in. We, uh, Danny had done a little video the other day where he had uh, some jigs that he got from me, and he had uh, caught some some uh, skipjack on them. So I got some to get done and get to Jerry Parker here pretty quick. I've got to go pick up some quarter-ounce jig heads. I don't have any that size, but I'll get them all put together and get them out for him because he's going on a skipjack trip. And um, myself, I consider skipjack a panfish. Not that I'm ever going to put one of them stinking suckers in a pan, but they really are a fun fish to catch on light tackle. Even light, over over lightweight, they're fun to catch because you're using, a lot of times you're using uh, sabiki rigs with three or four, five, six hooks on them, depending on where you're at and what the limit is. And if you load up every one that you're using, they're all going a different direction, buddy. That That's some fun stuff right there. So I know that he's got that coming up. Hope he does really well, and I'll get them finished up and get them. Is, late is it the standard jig head size for skipjack a quarter ounce, Lyle? No, okay. not for me. But that he specifically wanted some like that. So Freddie says he's sorry he's late. He's still trying to get over the stupid COVID crap. Well, Freddie, we're sorry that you got that, Ooh. but I do hope you get to feeling better. I hope you feel better, Freddie. Also, you know, a lot of people out there are going through a lot of health stuff, including Freddie, Tim Molina. Tim Molina, um, for sure. We're obviously hoping that uh, Chrissy and Ernie are feeling up to it. Yep. Hopefully I didn't miss anybody else. Um, well, like I say Dave having that heart attack. That's a big deal there. Yep, that is. Been there, done that. Wife's been sick for three days. David over at uh, 
double hook, like you had mentioned, definitely we want to keep them in our thoughts. So. Yep. Dave said he put two concrete culvert tubes in a farm pond last month, 12 cedar trees a year ago, and the crappie are doing better. Well, there you go. they got a place to hide. They can get away from all the old bass that's going to eat them up, catfish, whatever else that's in there, and they can hide. So there's fishing fever. What's up, Austin? What's going on? What's up, Buck? How you doing, man? Good to see Buck in here. Austin's made it in. Good to see all you guys. We're, we're happy to have you in the show with us tonight. And, uh, hey, if any of you guys in chat have some type of comment on our topic of where to find our favorite little bluegill or crappie or whatever, well, me specifically is bluegill, but Mark, he fit chases crappie a lot more. But uh, put it in in the uh, in the chat, and we'll discuss it. You know, I'm thinking about that now. I think I chase more bluegill than I do uh, crappie, but that's a lot for a lot of bait during the summer. But oh, I do absolutely. Chase them. And you know, um, I'm fortunate enough that you know one of the ponds that I fish, um, that's connected to the Fox System Raw Waterway. That's just kind of a disclaimer there. All, everything here is all run off into the river, so it's technically one watershed, so I'm able to fish those and use those for bait fish. You know, knock on wood, hopefully I'm not wrong there. I'll deny yeah. it if, I'm, if I am. But anyways, um, I've seen one spot developed into quite the fishery. Um, nobody really takes fish from this spot except for me and, like, one other guy who catfishes. And uh, when I started fishing there maybe six, eight years ago, they were all small, you know, like half a hand size bluegill. And now you saw the size of the fish that me, Betty, and Brandon were catching. That's oh, yeah, that's what I'm nice. talking about. Even, you know, when I was in our um, uh, the panfish tournament or the championship that we were having, that mm -hmm. final day that I went there, I don't, I don't think I got a fish that was under – you know, nine inches out of that spot. So wow. that's turning it into quite the place. Problem is, I don't know if I'd use that those for, for bait as much. I know a lot of people would use the bigger baits, but you get a little bit of current, you get a big old panfish that's kind of like a sail in the water and it makes life a little difficult. So, and I don't have anything bigger than an eight-odd hook that I that I use. Maybe I need to get some bigger hooks too. That might be something to do. I don't know. We are, are you using them for flathead or, cat or for channels? Flatheads. You're using them live, ain't you? Yeah, I am most of the year. <laughs> use... They don't get too big for flatheads. I just don't. <laughs> this is true. If I'm using big baits, I like using baby carp, and I'll get those in a cast net. The carp at about eight inches, I'm a happy man. Six to eight inches, they're perfect. Underneath a float, underneath a float, they haven't let me down yet. It's kind of ridiculous. I Our actually have a tick. I actually have a TikTok on my TikTok page where it's a series of three TikToks. Where the first one, I actually show where the baby carp are hiding in a in a. a a brush pile you can see him swimming at the top and then it, it goes to me putting one on a float and then the third one is me actually landing a float out not not 25 feet from where those other carp are in another brush pile and and having it go down i got like a 34 pound i think it was out of that that time and i did all that in like less than an hour that was a pretty wow that's a good day morning. yeah that was a pretty productive morning so that's a good day i, I like carp too and i like it chunked up a lot of times because they're real bloody fish and they hold that blood in that spinal column really well. So it releases slower than a lot of other fish. And it has an odor to it that lasts and lasts. So, uh, and, and I'm talking about common carp now, Asian carp, it just, it's just disgusting, but yeah, it makes great bait. My favorite kind of cut bait is anything that'll stay on the hook. Shad, frozen shad doesn't stay on the hook very well. Fresh shad stays on a little better. Yeah. But other than that, bluegill is kind of my go-to cut bait. As far as like carp and stuff go, I don't cut them up too much. I used to back in the day, but my luck was no better than bluegill. So I figured rather than making that big old bloody mess in my boat, I'll just bring some bluegills. Along. You got a water hose, don't you? Actually, I don't. That's the only thing that didn't come in my boat. So I have been. But we're working on that. You know, Ryobi sells a, a, a portable uh, 18 volt that uses batteries, power washer, where you just drop the hose into the water and you pull a trigger and that's all you need. I was just going to get one of them for my boat. I'd be good. To I be have there. a complete setup minus the head that you squeeze and the, and the uh, uh, hose. 
I got the pump and everything. You just drill a hole in the back of the transom, just like you got from all the mother holes. You put it in there and it pumps it up, pressurizes it, and you just squirt it out. I just got installed. It. That was the only thing that I regret about not uh, ordering my boat and waiting until this year, but I'll live without it. I can do it. Yeah. it. I'll yeah, just take a know. bucket and wash that down. That works too. Yeah. Also, you know, I was going to put one of them in myself, not to go off on a tangent. We never do that on this show, do we, Lyle? Yeah, never. I was going to put mine in myself. I was going to tap into one of the uh, uh, two live lines that come in there and uh, hook the pump up there. I got extra auxiliary switches and stuff, so it wouldn't be a problem. Except that uh, uh, the two little portholes in the back in front of the motor, in order to reach down there and get that all work, all that work done, it's way down deep in there. I don't think my arm's long enough to get down there and do that kind of intro intricate of an install so i had called my dealer up and they want like 1400 bucks for the parts oh my the God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah i think i'm gonna get the 200 dollars ryobi and keep that in the boat absolutely absolutely yeah uh, yeah i got mine you know uh fixed up where it's really easy to get back there and do all that stuff so i'm i'm really not too worried about any of that but anyhow, back to back to what we was talking about. So we talked a little bit about like actually finding fish on 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 body water that you're sitting at. I thought we should maybe take a little bit of time and talk about finding body bodies of water to actually fish at. Hence, That's a good idea. The, the thumbnail. I don't know. I'm sure Ryan didn't notice, but for the thumbnail, I I use the the Channel Lakes up here in Illinois, Northern Illinois, uh, for for the backdrop in there. Um, uh, it's a pretty big lake system, so finding you know panfish on there is never an easy thing unless you know where you're looking at. So, but my first stop would definitely be Navionics if I'm looking for a place. Let's say I'm going up there in the chain and and I want to fish a certain lake. Um, you're obviously checking depths. There's actually somewhere. <laughs> Actually, I won't say that. I'm saying I'm going to save that for a video idea if we ever get around to it. We'll talk about that later. But there's uh, uh, on the Navionics web app, um, uh, there's actually spots in there uh, where people have marked or where they've caught fish. There's spots um, on a lot of lakes where fish cribs are at, Lyle. And fish cribs are pretty good places to start. Um, I've used the Navionics web app on my phone prior to getting you know the the dreaded live scope right <laughs> and it brought me right and it brought me right to the fish cribs you know so it's pretty dead on there's a free version of it the cribs are marked on there uh the locations within i think 15 feet uh, i i you know count i might be right i might be wrong i think it's somewhere around there and uh, um there is a good place to start um navionics I, I go there quite a bit like uh i'm hoping to get down and fish with jerry um next month we'll see what happens um i've been looking at the lake we plan on fishing on navionics quite a bit looking for you know like we were talking earlier underground underwater points things like that where, where to launch boats everything uh where the channel is if it's a um if it's a reservoir um things like that but navionics is a good good place to start just like you know well let's take a step back i'll start at google maps go into google maps find bodies of water see if there's public access go over to navionics and start from there um do you ever use any of those tools lyle i use navionics a lot and um, i'm trying to think of the other i have another card too from another company and i can't think of the name of it i don't know i don't what who makes that Oh no! It, it they make them for all all of them, but um, Lake Master. I have Lake Master also. Lake Master, that's it. Um, there is advantages to both of them. There are things that I like more on one than the other. Uh, I don't do as much travel on that as I once did. So we had for all over the United States because you never knew where we was going to go from one time to the next, but. Uh, mostly staying a little closer to home now, but um, if you're going to be fishing the lakes, I, I really like the Lake Master stuff because it's really easy to adjust the different levels of water as the lake changes throughout the year to where you're not getting your boat in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. It's real simple to change the water depth so you can keep yourself out of trouble. That works out really well on Lake Master. You can do it on Avionics, but it's easier on Lake, or it's easier for me 
on Lake Master. Yeah, it's but it's I, unit specific too, because I can I can yeah. change the I can make plus or minus water depth too to to make up for uh, um, for water changes, whether it's high water conditions or low water conditions stuff. Right. I don't use it much. I'd be lying if I said I did. So, you know, I, I kind of know at the at least the local places, if I'm going to launch at a, a, a boat launch that I, I launch at quite a bit, there's a few of them that I use. I could just take a look at the docks and know just say, hey, it's a foot lower and kind of get a good idea of, of what's going on. Yeah, just, I, I really like fishing docks. One of the things that I like about my state and I don't know if, if other states are like this or not, but Missouri Department of Conservation mark the brush piles and places that they that they put in, uh, like on Lake Ozark and Truman and Stockton and Palm de Terre. If they put structure in, man-made structure, they mark it to where you can go yep. find it. And that is extremely handy. But there's one other thing, Mark, that we have neglected to talk about. It's called overhanging trees. Um, if there's a tree that overhangs the lake in shallow water, especially, they're probably going to be fish under because bugs and stuff fall off them trees all the time. And if it happens to be a mulberry tree or anything oh, like yeah. that, you got to fish it. You just got to. So I, I like all, all that stuff. Yeah, overhanging trees on a lake in shallow water is sort of like a cut bank on a river. Because you know there's going to be something underneath there. Yep. This real and fishing, uh, real and virtual outdoors. Hey Troy, how you doing? Yeah, mulberry bushes. That's I'm, I totally forgot about that. I, that's kind of one of my bucket list things to do, and that's to catch a channel cat on a mulberry. But they'll eat them. They'll eat them, but they'll sit underneath the mulberry bushes. I've seen them out yeah. there. You know, I've seen. But them you don't can't use them for bait. You put just hey with a cane pole and a mulberry. Oh, you could river. do that, I guess. You I know something that. else. I've never seen a catalpa tree on a riverbank, but yet channel cat love catalpa worms. Yeah, I've never so, seen a chicken underwater swimming in the water, but they'll eat chicken. Are you sure? That's what they tell me. Okay. You know how fishermen are. I don't mean <laughs> they're telling us the truth a lot. <laughs> no, they don't. And most of them don't. <laughs> Jerry Parker says he keeps he catches fish on. Jerry catches fish on everything. I think he put turd on it to catch fish. I really Jerry, do. Jerry, Jerry's had a horseshoe medically uh, installed, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> I think he's just that good. <laughs> Buck William says he likes inside deep weed edges. Yeah, that's a great spot. That's I a great agree. spot, Buck. Yeah, it really is. River so. Runners here just showed up. How you doing, bud? There's uh, uh, Troy over at Real and Virtual Outdoors. What's going on? They River, um, River Runner says that Moon Eye and Golden Eye are his favorite bait. That happens oh, yeah. for years, too. Absolutely. I love Moon Eye. Um, Jerry Parker has has a way, and he hasn't done a video like this in a while, so I'm hoping he'll go back and do one before long. But he walks up and down, down these creek banks. Now, 20, 25 years ago, I would love to have done that and probably did do some of that and don't remember too much of it. But he gets in places that the average guy goes, Trey, our old buddy Trey, mm -hmm. he does that in all his videos. They get to places and go places where the average old boy – is not going to go. They can find places uh, in creeks and small rivers that people don't want to walk that far to. In my case, it's not that I don't want to. I can't walk that far. So that leaves it open to guys like Jerry and Trey that can do that and get to those places. Um, James Dockery has a belly tube thing that he, a floating tube that he, crawls up in. Of course, it don't have to be the size of a donut for him to get in it. <laughs> but but he goes out and floats around and gets to places other people can't get to. That's one of the advantages of these guys with kayaks that they have because they can get to places that you can't get to in, in a boat like yours or mine. Well, a kayak don't hurt either. That's no. That's why they're pretty popular. I mean, when, when kayaks first came out, uh, the fishing kayaks were a little more affordable. They're getting up there in price range, just like everything. I see what you're laughing at there, Lyle. You might. Yeah, he's just so mean to me. 
but he did come to see me. <laughs> oh, you mean and, and, and I thought you were laughing at Josh over here. That's what I was. He did come to see me when he was in Springfield the other day. Hey, look at this outdoors with Ted Allenbacker. How you doing, hey, Ted? Ted? Glad to see you in here tonight. We're gonna we're gonna do a seminar with Ted on Catfish Weekly coming up here really soon. So be sure to tune in to the channel and we'll post that on both so everybody can get in there and watch it. Be on Saturday morning. He's gonna be doing a seminar live in um, South Dakota, and we're gonna broadcast it on Catfish Weekly for him. So that should make it a fun day. Ted's always a great guest to have. I actually got a comment on a video I did with Ted on my channel just like yesterday. So yep. somebody said that they got the chance to meet him in real life and that he was a, 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 a great guy to chat with. And, I'm and very that. sure that is correct. I talk to him on, on Messenger all the time. Uh, David Double Hook Angler says he can't wait to get his kayak out. Um, I'm anxious to see that as long as you're safe, Dave. But I... I that ought to be interesting to watch you in one. It'd I think be all right. Low center of gravity. That's I think it'll good. be fun. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of different things about kayaks that that uh, I'm not interested in, but being able to go in really shallow water, and if you, and if especially if you're on where I have these small rivers out here around me, there's going to be places you're going to have to get out of that thing and drag it through, or have somebody drag you through, which would be okay. But I still have my eye set on a mini pontoon. They're about 9 or 11 foot long. They're wide. You can't turn them over. And I think that that would be really cool for these small rivers and creeks that I got to fish. Uh, I'm not like Jerry. I can't take off walking and, and walk 15 mile an hour. I don't know how anybody ever keep up with him. He's like a mountain man on a creek bank. But... Uh, he goes and catches a lot of fish, and multi-species is one of the more fun things that, uh, about Jerry's videos when he does that is he'll catch everything in that creek. You know, there might be five or six, eight, ten different kinds of fish that he'll catch on one trip. And a lot of times, if you're where you can only fish one specific area on any body of water, you're limited to the number of fish that will be in that spot where Jerry just walked to the next hole and there'd be different fish there. So I like that. Different kinds of structure and all that stuff. David over at Double Hook Angler says, I'm about done with my pontoon. If it wasn't for this heart attack, I would probably be on the water already. Wow. You'll get to it, bud. Just get better first and you'll be good. Yeah, to that's go. exactly right. Yeah, um, we got a couple spots here on the Fox um, that I could, couldn't could get in with my old boat, let alone my new one, uh, that every time I go by, I always wish that I still had my kayak to get back in there and check it out. I'm thinking there'd be a lot of fun fishing back in there, probably a lot of uh, a bow fin, which I know they're, they're considered trash fin, but they are native species, and they fight like the Dickens. That'd be a good time to, that'd be a, that would be a lot of fun to to fight them out of a kayak for sure. And I'm just curious as to see what's back in those spots. I think uh, Ryan probably knows where I'm talking about up in Port Barrington and stuff. There's some shallows uh, back there, which would be cool to get to. So if you got a chance to do that, um, I highly recommend, oh my goodness, highly recommend uh, uh, getting out there in, in something a little more maneuverable than an oversized boat if you can't get there on foot. Yeah, I, I never had any desire for a pontoon boat. Never. Because we always traveled so much. I don't want to drag one damn thing around. Uh, there's so many places you cannot get in with a pontoon boat because they're not because they set so low in the water. It's because they're so tall. Uh and, and why? They just won't go in a lot of places. But it would be a consideration. I really want one of the minis. Uh they're one man operation like a kayak. But like I say, they're wide enough. It'd be really, really hard to turn one over. I think that would be a lot of fun. But we'll see. I We had a pontoon boat a long time ago, a 24-foot Alumacraft. And uh, it, it, I, I was a water taxi driver. I ain't going to kid around. Cause I, my, everybody always wanted to go up for a ride up and down. I just 
darn Tippecanoe River. So I didn't get to fish. And a few times I did get to fish. If there was some wind out there, it's such a small river. It was it was kind of difficult to fish out of. But yeah. When it worked, it worked. So yeah, that's all that matters. I know for the right for some people they are they are the ticket. Well, for other people they're not. So you know, I keep talking about, you know, my grandfather, he was probably um, my mentor, first mentor when it came to fishing. And, and, and he was a, a merchant Marine who had lost a leg in an anchor chain. So he had an artificial leg. It was easy for him to get in and out of that boat. So, and my mm. grandmother was a lot older. She would come with me as well too. So it was easy for them to get it in and out of the boat. So right, yeah, it, I, I, it, it was, it was a blessing. I'm not going to say that it wasn't, but it did oh. make life fishing in, and it did make fishing life uh, a little difficult, but you know, when we were fishing in there, there, there's a lot of sandbars, little islands with sandbars, on the uh, downside of the current, I would always beach that boat in there and just catfish off the back of it. That worked pretty well. Yeah. Well, I look for places to launch my boat now. It, one of the necessities is it must have a, a dock to get, mm -hmm. load and unload on. Um, it's not that we can't get in and out of the boat without a dock. It's just getting harder and harder to do. So why go through that? When you can step off the dock and step right in the boat and you're done. It's you know, I, I've been meaning to get out to that special place up north. Um, all, all them all them big channel cats are staging up there in the bay already from what I've heard. I but I don't think the docks are in there yet. So it's I'm kind of got to get my truck in order and then we'll head out there. Hopefully they'll have the docks in there by then and I can go uh, get on some big channel kids. I plan on spending a little bit of more time up there this year rather than just a trip and see if I can't get that 30 I've been looking for. I'd like to get a replica and have it mounted behind me. That's one of my goals for the year. Oh, that'd be fun. That would be fun. Ernie Brown says, I'm beat. I about a thousand foot walk with a walker. Glad to see you're getting around better, Ernie. That's a, that's a quite a jolt. A thousand foot's a pretty long way after having a knee replacement. So congratulations. Uh, Josh, no. Josh, the weekend end. Never, Anderson. ever. Lyle, you need to get that pontoon put so we can call you Pontoon Lyle. And I've been nothing but nice to you, Josh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, my. What am I going to do with them guys? I don't know. Yeah, you Josh, just keep chatting with them. Yeah, I will. It don't matter. It's all fun. He just wants to ride in. That's all. <laughs> uh, no comment. <laughs> so another another tool that I use now. Um, here's a disclaimer: I uh, I get paid to do work for uh, Fishbrain. Uh, I do contract work for them uh, a couple three times a year. Uh, they've been really good to me. Um, uh, actually, the electronics in my boat are, are kind of paid for by work I do with them. So I have to be very grateful and gracious to them, but it is a tool that I do use. Uh, there's a free version of fish brain where you'll go on there and you can see maps, which has a lot of the Navionics data. Actually, I think it's a hybrid between Navionics and Lake flu and Lake view. I could find out, but uh, I, I'm not quite sure. So don't quote me on that. Uh, it shows where people are, are, are fishing. Uh, a lot of guys, it's like social media for fishing. Guys will post their, ca their catches there. Uh, they'll drop a waypoint. Doesn't necessarily mean they're telling the truth, but you'll get an idea on what body of water and what they're catching. Um, if you got like a premium membership, I'm not trying to upsell anybody. There's a tackle store. It actually lists what they caught it on, things like that. Um, you can sort this. Now, this is a really cool feature of it, Lyle. This is what sold me on the app. You can do a sort by month. So you can only view all the fish in your local area caught, let's say, you know, in, in the month of April, in the month of March, in the month of May, and find out who's catching what there, where. That That's gives you a, handy. That is kind of handy. It gives you a little uh, um, um, insight as to what's biting when. With the weather, there's weather app in there. There's a tackle store. That's all the little bells and whistles. But once you start looking at that app, you start looking at where people are catching fish. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of older people like you and I, we kind of keep our, uh, I, I actually don't, but I know a lot of people my age and close, even younger than us, they don't share information with anybody. Am I wrong? No, that's, that's correct. Where the younger crowd has 
no problem doing that for the most part, uh, especially online and apps like that. And those guys are the, those kids are the ones that are out there fishing day and night. So uh, they got a good idea of what's biting where, to be honest with you. Yep. I agree. What are you doing back there? Who? You. I'm, I'm trying to, um, I want to send Jerry Parker a, um, private message, but I hit the wrong button. Oh, Frank, no, that, that is you. never going to happen either. I don't, not only do I not, I've worked for General Motors for years. I don't ride in them. I don't let people park them in front of my house. I don't care what Chevrolet or GM product it is. You park down the street and walk to my, that simple as that. Um, I've had to crawl up in the middle of the night when there's six inches of snow on over road trucks to unload them non-starting damn things. I don't do shit legs, period. And no pontoons. Jerry Parker, Jerry Parker says, oh, pontoon Lyle with co-host pontoon Jody has a nice ring to it. He's such a smart ass. <laughs> damn. Neither <laughs> one. I made my daughter bought a Mitsubishi one time. Made her park down the street for a long time. Will her park in front of my house? <laughs> Austin over at Fish and Fever says, "I used to use Fish Brain, but people started using it as a bragging board instead of an information sharing tool." Well, you can kind of get in, you can extract information when people start bragging too. Can can you stop that from happening? Can you just use it and select what parts of it you want to use? Yeah, you gotta click you gotta click on whatever part you want to use anyway. So you would click on the map, you'd look at the maps, it would show where there are fish catches. Then you could actually click on the spots that are marked on there, and it'll show you what was caught reportedly in that spot. So if I was if I was to get that, um, can I specifically say I want to fish Palm de Terre Lake tomorrow? Can I just go to Palm de Terre to Lake, yep. get all the information I want. Now, if I want to go the next day, if I want to go to Truman Lake, can I just get Truman Lake the next day? 100%. Well, that's, see, now that's kind of handy. 100%. <laughs> that's right. That's right, Frank. <laughs> uh, I, I really have done that to my kids. I really have. <laughs> Uh, I haven't really done it to anybody else, but nobody showed up in a Dodge truck either. So it's easy, easy. <laughs> All right. I wasn't going to highlight this, but I'm going to now. Josh, the weekend anger says, not a bad policy, Lyle. If a Chevrolet was parked in front of your house, it'd make it tough for the record to get your Ford out of the driveway. <laughs> Ford to be going when the Chevrolets are just crying about getting go. <laughs> Don't make me upload that video I sent you last week. That was kind of funny. Okay. We do have a lot of fun with that. We really do. Mm -hmm. Austin said, nothing against fish brain. I was using it for some local ponds is all. There you go. Oh, I didn't I, think you did. I didn't know that it would do local ponds, but it well, hey, also the body well, of water, here, here, water, the body of water, I guess. Here's another tool that I know people that use. I don't have a subscription to it, but if you're a hunter, you know what the Onyx app is, right? No, I do not. Onyx is an app that shows um, um, plots of land, who owns it, what's public, what's not. Oh, it's a for, plat map. For That's what it is. It's a database app of plat maps. Wow. So it also, you know, it's got satellite imagery so you can see where ponds and stuff are. You can see where who the owner of that pond is and try to find out who to contact. If you'd like to fish on someone's private land down the street from me, there's a pond that I always thought was private, 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 because it had a vacant house on the property and I could never find out who, who owned that house at that address. Well, it turns out it's a state preserve. So I could have been fishing there the whole darn time anyway. Oh, wow. So Things like that. So that Onyx app, if you have access to something like that, I imagine people like Jerry and and a couple other other hunting people, maybe even uh, um, Danny Stone. Um, that that's something you can use for too. I also understand that they're creating a fishing app too at Onyx. So that sounds really interesting to me, Ernie. Don't worry, I'll let you park in the neighbor's drive. <laughs> You need a puppy. I, I 
I know this is not on topic, but like you said earlier, we seldom stray from topic. Bacon? Are we talking about bacon? No, no, no. Okay. We have a little puppy in our house that if it gets left alone, it really raises hell. Oh, it started getting bad? Oh, my God. Today it was so funny. Uh, I woke up and Cindy was gone. I didn't know she'd left. She was snoozing in my chair. And the dog was howling, and it was so bad that I took my phone and recorded it. And oh. I'm going to make a ringtone out of it. <laughs> it was amazing. She just kept going on. Speaking of puppies. Them are not little, puppies any longer. No, they'll be two years old in, in June. Wow, Bye. that's hard to believe. It seems like we just got them. The whole, during the whole show, this dog has been farting in here, just so you guys know. Jerry Parker will love that dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I, the maps sound really interesting. I'm really interested in um, For those that have been through Buffalo, there's only one motel really in town. Now, there's something going on where they're putting little cabins up for a place to stay. Um, I don't think that that's completely a done deal yet, but the other motel wasn't very nice. And it, I, of course, I don't know how my system has looked pretty good, but uh, it's pretty expensive from what I understand. But like I say, I do not know. Um, but behind it is a huge pond. And I understand that it is owned by the people that own that motel. Now, with that app that you're talking about, I could find out for sure who owns that. And then I wouldn't have to worry about who does and doesn't give permission to fish that pond because that will be like two minutes from my house, which would be really, really nice and handy. You know, Lyle, everybody keeps making fun of us for being old. You know, if yeah. we, but at our age, if, if the police pull up while we're fishing where we're not supposed to fish, we could just pretend we're senile. They'll even give us a ride back home without getting arrested. We'll be good. We got nothing to worry about, but there's advantages. <laughs> there's Dan Thompson. Welcome, Dan. Um, what's, going, what's going on, Dan? Real quick, uh, Parker says he uses Onyx, um, a bunch for finding non marked public ground for hunting, um, and it has helped him find some overlooked honey holes. There you go. I and do also, know that go Austin ahead. says there are some pics on Google images that make me look like I know what I'm doing for certain species around here. But all it was was a post on fish brain. Well, there you go. There you go. Yeah. I know that um, um, I'd never heard of those, and I'm very intrigued with that onyx and uh, and uh, the other one you was talking about, too, mm -hmm. fish brain. Uh, I, I think that and, and if I'm correct now, there is free versions and paid versions. Is that correct? That is correct. For both? That is correct. Okay. There's another website, too. I think I haven't used it in a while called Lakeview, if I'm not mistaken. Lake Master. No, the Lake Master oh. is the maps. I think it's called. Yeah, that's Lakeview. the mapping. It could be Lakeview. I'll look it up after the show and send you the link, Lyle. Okay. Uh, but a lot of times if you have if you're wondering about a certain body of water it'll have uh uh information on um what's in that lake has been stocked have people fished it stuff like that too though <laughs> frank <laughs> you just mean hey i i can play a role too i don't care yeah <laughs> Hey, Josh, Josh, who? I don't, I don't know. Do I know a Josh? I gotta tell you, I get stopped. I don't have to buy a license. I don't have to show them a license. I just pull out my identification, my driver's license. Says you're 65 years old. You don't have to have license no more. So, Josh, <laughs> just tell them read between the lines. That's, all. That's, right. That's exactly it. <laughs> Uh, what what there was uh, Lakeview was another one that I that I've used in the past. I think those are all. Oh, uh, obviously, go to your state's DNR DNR site. I know that Doc uses that an awful lot too. It, it you can search a lake by a region. At least in Illinois, you can search for lake by region in the state. It'll tell you the stocking programs. If they do uh, uh, shocking reports, it uh, sometimes they'll list that stuff there. 
um, it, it's a good place to start as well. Is it public fishing? Um, does it have zebra mussels, Asian carp reports, all sorts of stuff like that? The DNR site for your your state's a good place to to check too. So, and that's that. usually real reliable information. Mm -hmm. Ted Ellenbecker says, twenty years ago, we developed a software called Fish Hunter, a little ahead of its time. Over twenty five hundred recorded catches. You put in the season, species, and river or lake, and it gives you suggested presentation. That is way cool. And that was 20 years ago before this other stuff was even thought about. Ted's just a little ahead of his time. Mm -hmm. He might have been wealthy now. <laughs> Wouldn't have to be doing seminars if he didn't come up with it at the right time. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. So I think we went through a lot of good information tonight, didn't we, Lyle? I think so. I hope everybody enjoyed it as much as we did bring it to everybody. We had a good time. I always have a good time. So That's right. And some of the things that we need to get worked out, just so the people know that we haven't forgot about them, is uh, doing that swap shop show. So hopefully we can get that in the next two weeks. Maybe we can shoot for a while. That's good. I wanted to make sure that I brought that up. So if you guys have something you want to sell on here to, uh, uh, you know, fellow viewers or, or people that watch this, here's a good place to do it. I, I, I know there's a lot of good people in here. So if you have something to uh, sell uh, and you want to do it on here, we'll, we'll, we'll make the announcement to get that done here real soon. Uh, you'll get to come up here. Uh, have pictures for stuff or no we'll let them come up here if they got oh, okay okay we'll let yeah. them come yeah. up they can they can use their salesmanship techniques and and give their contact information and, and see if anybody is interested in that so yep that sounds good what did uh, josh make you do <laughs> yeah 65 points as you know um no zeros but i kind of passed the 65 thing but, yeah, I'm sure Josh did. He, I'm, he's that kind of guy. No doubt in my mind. But, yeah, that sounds like a fun show. It may or may not last an hour. Uh, it may go over, depending on how much stuff people got that they want to try to part with. Uh, may not. We may not have that much. And either way, we'll have something else to talk about to, to go along with it. 100%. Also, and we're going to come up, we're going to have that the finale of the Panfish Championship. Yeah, I don't know what the date is. It's a after. It's going to be a, a day after one of the tournaments that somebody else has got going on. So I think it's going to be on a Sunday. Uh, I okay. have to get um, Chad and Josh and all of us was talking about that one night, and they had couldn't come up with a date. And somebody said, "Well, how about after that, whatever tournament was?" And I can't remember all that crap. But uh, yeah, whatever whatever day it is, and we'll get that done and get it done. But I still think that's a great fun deal to to do. I think it'll be kind of a good thing. I think it could take off too. Frank selling fish tattoos. <laughs> Great man. Greg Burgess in the house. What's going on? Hey, buddy. He said he was fishing with my grandson uh, and wildlife and fisheries to ask for a license. Uh, and he looked at me and said, You. I kind of <laughs> don't get it. <laughs> There's John from Small Waters. Thanks for stopping in. I um I don't mind buying a fishing license. We've talked about this before, Mark. I, I really don't. Um, they spend a lot of the revenue they get. Missouri Department of Conservation is not part of the state of Missouri or anything. It's an entity all of its own. Um, they get a percentage of the tax dollars. They get the money off of fishing license and other stuff. Do they do everything I think they should with the money? No, but they do a lot of good stuff. So I'll take the good with, I'll take the stuff they do. I like along with the stuff they do that I don't care about uh, because you can't have it all your way. You got to be willing to take and give and take a little bit. And they, their management is really, really good. Their studies Although I find it hard to believe you have to do a five-year study on everything. When they make a decision, they're pretty much sure that it is the correct decision, so I can live with that also. They always have a bunch of super people in there. They will always talk to you. They will explain things to you. And I have, although I have had run-ins with wardens before, they was only doing their job. If I don't approve of how they do it, that's on me, not on them. 
So uh, if you guys would consider that when they check you for your license and stuff, them guys make a living. They don't make an exorbitant living doing that job. It's it's like so many jobs. You have to want to do that to be able to do that because they could all probably go out and get a job making more money and not put up with nearly the amount of bullshit. So that's my outlook on, on conservation department and game wardens and stuff like that. Agreed. Great show tonight, Mark. Thank you for coming in with me. I think we had a lot of fun. Hopefully we shared some I did. information. <laughs> I always do. We have, I we, have a lot of, we have a lot of fun. So I hope people learned something. I hope they put some of this to use to find in places to catch fish because any day now, the panfish fishing will take off. The bass are spawning or getting ready to spawn. Let's see here, Mr. 70 food. degrees. Yeah. That, that's that's what, happening that's here too soon. 65, 70 is when, when the bluegill will start coming up on the banks. Crappie are already pre mowed right now in our area. So they will be moved there. If they're not moved up yet, they will be moving up, and then the bluegill will come in after them. Bass are already in there, or, or they're right there at it. So uh, another another 5 or 10 degrees on the water, and business is really, really going to pick up. So um, clear water, get your shiny hineys out and all that fancy stuff. And you got some dirty water, get you some dark stuff. You'll catch some fish. Gulp alive. Good, good bait of choice. Always worms, live bait of any kind. If you see them little bitty ones swimming around all over the place, you're, you're in the right spot. <laughs> you're in the right spot. And, and, and if you get the chance, home. get out there and morel hunt. Ours are getting ready to pop here probably in the next two weeks. I know Southern Illinois and further south of there, they're already popping. So get out there. I've been hearing it down here too. I haven't seen any myself, but I had a lady tell me two weeks ago they was finding them south. A Springfield down towards Branson. Now, that seemed a little early to me, but then with, that's when it was, you know, we had a whole bunch of 70 degree days after a rain. So, possible. Good stuff. You're locked up. Oh, no. How about now? Oh, there you are. You're back. All right. You're back. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, tune in uh, Wednesday night, or this is Wednesday night, tomorrow night. For Chad and uh, Freddie and uh, Brian, Brian, damn, and uh, watch them. You're, on you're the gonna think that memory loss is a real thing, Lyle. You... It's it's all that crap I hear from Josh and Parker and them guys oh. to that show. It affects my mind. So. We got Stan, we got Stan <laughs> Show on Friday, Pontoon Jody right after that. Uh, there's some tournaments this weekend. Forgive me for not knowing exactly what yeah, they, I don't are. Know who they are. And then we'll be uh, back on Catfish Weekly Monday night. Absolutely. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.